Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Japan, Mr. Bond. It is a great pleasure to meet you at last. <laughs> and how do you like your country so far? I'm a trifle disappointed at the ease with which I could pull you in. The one thing my honourable mother taught me long ago was never to get into a car with a strange girl. But you, I'm afraid, would get into anything with any girl. I first came to know of Robert through his acting. Um, Robert had been, uh, has acted in lots and lots of films, lots of television uh, plays, has worked as an adapter. And it was only through sort of being interested in films and sitting and watching some of the end credits that I became aware of seeing his name in, in sort of other respects, doing other work, in, particularly, in particular um, post-production sound. Dobby has taken hold of me, I haven't taken hold of it. I was doing some revoicing of one or two minor characters in a film once, and the director suddenly realised he had need of the leading actor to change dialogue, and he wasn't available. So he asked me, do you think you might be able to imitate him and get away with it? I tried, and it seemed to work, and he was happy. From then on, the word spread, and I kept being called to revoice other people, important people, with, who weren't able to come and do their revoicing themselves. The dubbing process for voices involves the replacement of faulty dialogue recorded on location or additional dialogue which is recorded to bolster a story at the edges. The actor has to speak the words. We can then for large rooms and large premises add echo or reverb to help match in the original with the new recording. It's not just a matter of, of matching voices to, to dialogue, which is difficult enough as it is, because, of course, someone speaking Italian, their mouth moves in a different way to the way that your mouth would move if you were speaking in English. But the other thing is the script has to be prepared. It has to be translated. Then it has to be, it has to be matched to picture. Then it has to, you have to find a way to make it colloquial. So the process of dubbing is, is, a, is a long, complicated one because it happens at the very end of the filmmaking process. Brocade, Your Highness. Shiny buttons and lace and mother of pearl. I began my career as a boy actor and at that time people used the word prodigy rather freely. But I starred in as poor Joe in Bleak House at the Palladium and I was playing with Elizabeth Bergner and the boy David in Sir James Barry's last play at Her Majesty's Theatre here in London. Then came bridging between boyhood and adulthood, voice breaks, and as often as not, children who become famous as children don't make the grade into becoming adult actors. I was very fortunate. I continued my career. He's acted in Sunday Bloody Sunday, uh, he's acted in Hannibal, for example, Hillary and Jackie, uh, The Omen, he's worked in John Huston's The Bible. However, what's more difficult is to find out the films for which he prepared the English language versions. For example, he worked on two films by Marcel Ophels, uh, memory of Justice and the Sorrow and the Pity, uh, which wouldn't have received the kind of international recognition uh, that they did if it hadn't been for the fact that uh, really good quality English language versions have been prepared. These are some of the titles of films I've worked in, either as an actor or dummy. These are some of the awards that I've received. 
leave out some of the stars whose voices I had to redo either entirely or in sections to match up to their voices. Uh, Orson Welles, for example, in Treasure Island, there's not a word of his original track. It's all my voice, I'm afraid, as doing Orson Welles. What's your vote, Georgie? We sails off and we gets the treasure and we leaves them gentlemen ashore to starve slow life. Somehow the title, The Man with a Thousand Voices, got appended to me accidentally again, but I suppose because I very often must do five or six or, in the case of Waterloo, the film of Waterloo, 98 different voices, some of them only two lines, but even so they had to be different voices. And don't try doctoring any hands for me while I'm away. In the James Bond Doctor No, Robert holds the envious position of being the first person killed, or his voice. But about two minutes later, in the roulette, Robert is playing someone else. Sweetie. Say Sweetie. The house will cover the difference. Yeah, madame. Oui, monsieur. Change s'il vous plaît. In this country, people hate watching subtitled films. But at the same time, if a film is dubbed, the reviewers take one look at it and say it's dubbed and people don't want to know. If you look at uh, reviews of, of continental films released in, in England in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, you'll notice that they're very often disparaging about dubbing, what they call dubbing, which is the revoicing of foreign actors into English. Sean Connery was in a film called The Red Tent, made by Italians and Russians. And I had to redub practically the whole film. When it appeared in London, a very well-known London critic damned the dubbing to all eternity and gave us an example, the only scene in the entire film where we used the original dialogue. So that shows you what kind of prejudice that is against dubbing. I call dubbing the hidden history of cinema because almost without fail, the people who worked in the area of dubbing and post-production sound and English language versions failed to receive any credit at all, which is why it was so difficult to actually research Robert's career. So this, the simple answer to the question of whether Robert has received the recognition that he deserves is no, he hasn't, because hardly anyone knows about the work he's done, which I think is a terrible shame. In this country, as I say, one remains anonymous if one is dubbing. But in countries like Italy and France, where 98% of foreign films are dubbed into the vernacular, uh, it becomes a very important art. And in Italy, for example, because of the work that I've done on Italian films, I was given a knighthood. And then that was upgraded from Cavaliere al Merito, which means um, knighthood of merit. Then it became officer knight of merit, which is rather nice. It's the equivalent of, of a sir in this country. Slightly above that, sir. A little lower than Lord, but a little above, sir. Robert is one of the top, or well, probably the top actor. One of the unique things about Robert is that he can act, he can write, he can direct the dubbing, which is to say that he actually has facility in directing other actors. So he can do everything. I'm often asked, are you happy with what you've achieved? And it's really an unfair question because Unless one is pig-headed and swollen-headed, one always thinks one could do better, given a second chance, another performance. One is always trying to improve. If he does his job well, no one knows he's done his job. So when he revoices Peter Sellers' lines in Casino Royale, for example, no one's aware of it because it sounds like Peter Sellers. And that's because Robert's brilliant. I must say you have a lot of energy for a dead man, Mr. Bond. You are James Bond, aren't you? I am so very pleased to meet you, Mr. Bonson. I really am. Permit me to introduce myself. My name is Tanaka. Please call me Tiger. If you're Tanaka, how do you feel about me? I love you. <laughs> So it seems 
life for yourself and one for your dream.